unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For they are not more than thousands. I would rather be a glory in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that have granted the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord and be song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth.
good afternoon, family. It is an honor and a blessing to ask you to say a prayer. And we just have to put our faith in Jesus. Let's go to the throne. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us with another day. Yeah. Us up this morning. Yeah. You brought us out this morning for church, dear Lord. You kept us safe. <coughs> you brought us back again this afternoon for this special blessing. Our family member, my cousin Keith. Yeah. Awesome to have you, Father. We just thank you, Lord, thank you Lord. for all you've done for all of us each and every day. Yeah. In this small church. St. Paul, you have me church right here in Palmyra, New Jersey, where Keith is a member, dear Lord. He's stepping out on faith. Yeah. You're asking him to do more for you and your kingdom, dear Lord. He's praying for your kingdom. Having you out on your street, dear Lord. So many people out there that don't know you for part yeah. of your sin, dear yeah. Lord. Just continue to lead him you want him to go, dear Lord, talking to people that don't know you, yeah. showing them what you've done for him yeah. in his life, dear Lord, leading him all the ups and downs he had, you brought him back to you, dear Lord, and you want him to show them what he can preach to them to do for you also, dear Lord, not beat them with the Bible, just show them, Lord. Yeah. How you led him through his life, dear Lord. Go out to the stores, the malls, the little stores like Wawa. When he walks in, Lord, the way he walks, the way he talks, they know he's a child of the king. So, dear Lord, just continue to be with him. It's hard to go blessings and going different places now, dear Lord. So, you found a way for him to go online, on Zoom, dear Lord, to get his lessons, his schooling, dear Lord. He just lead us the right way. So right now, dear Lord, just touch him. Put your hands on his heart, dear Lord. Yeah, yeah. Touch his mind and his soul, dear Lord. To bring forth your word through him, dear Lord. To God be the glory. We just continue to give all the glory and honor and praise that you deserve, dear Lord. We just thank you for all your blessings in your son, Jesus Christ. We all have to show this day. Amen. 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 Amen.
and prepare me for the leadership, the decision making, the referee. Oftentimes, people have come to me and said, you're the peacemaker, the voice of reason. It's not something that I just did myself. It's what the good Lord instilled in me. But he had to mold me because when I first came out of school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Lost. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Saved the rest like me. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Fine, but now I see. As I pondered the question, what subject should I speak on for my trial sermon? I looked deep inside myself and said, why not speak about your own personal testimony and what the Lord has done for me? And how my life and career have evolved since. As I recall walking across the stage at the Scope Auditorium in Norfolk, Virginia, and receiving my diploma, I felt a sense of great accomplishment, but at the same time, I pondered the question as to what I was now supposed to do with the rest of my life. I recall the fond memories of my family chartering our bus, journeying all the way down to Virginia and share that special moment. It was truly a moment that I've always cherished deep within my heart. And getting back to the question, where do I go from here? And what was the next chapter of my life? And before I proceed on, if nothing else, a, a subject, a title for this, what is your calling? What is your calling from God? And did you answer? What does he want you to do? And if you, if you answer that, where are you at right now? You better go on. Where are we at right now? What are we sitting on? What was I supposed to do with this piece of paper that I call a diploma? I do call, uh, recall initially seeking employment in Virginia with little or no success. So thus I packed up the rain of my things from my park and tied it to my 1974 Mac, which my aunt Peaches so graciously donated me for the mind volume price of one dollar. <laughs> I made the journey back to my beautiful home state of New Jersey. After returning home, there were many thoughts that came across my mind. And I realized that I was at a crossroads and I was searching for a direction as to which way I should go with my uh, life and career. As a business major, I felt compelled to seek employment with a number of companies with the hope of landing an entry level job and climbing the corporate ladder. I recall filling out numerous applications and going on countless interviews, and each time I came up empty with either a rejection letter or another candidate that had been select selected for the job. This became very frustrating. God to the glory, my Uncle Dan Roberts came to, the, to my rescue. <clears throat> Put in the good word for me to come work for RCA Company out in Morristown, New Jersey. The position was in maintenance, maintenance something I was not, I did I didn't go to school for. However, I accepted the job because of paperwork. And I had become very frustrated trying to find a job or career that was even accepted. Long story short, I stayed in the position in the maintenance department a lot longer than I had anticipated because the money I was making looked awfully good for a single man coming out of college. Uh -huh. However, I knew it was time to look deep within myself and explore a career that was more closely related to what my parents sent me to school for. Lo and behold, I landed in a position as a supervisor at RCA in the manufacturing department of the company. Wow! I recall my first day in the position. I was now able to wear a shirt and tie. <laughs> and I had to tru truly accomplish, I had the feeling that I truly accomplished something. And I know, now I have the opportunity to delegate authority and tell other people what to do. <laughs> I now position myself to begin to climb the corporate ladder. And I honestly believe I would now be employed with the company until the day I retire. That could not have been the furthest thing. <laughs> I vividly remember going to work. <laughs> That day, that particular day, I just returned from homecoming at my own modern local feet. I was summoned to the manager's office by my supervisor. He had indicated he had a few things to discuss with me. Well, you guessed it, he had my pink slip. He told me the company was involved in the corporate downsizing that occurred back in the 90s with several uh, Fortune 500 companies, and that I was no longer needed. Wow, I felt a sense of abandonment. Anger, bitterness, shame, and the list goes on. I do recall asking the Lord, why me? What did I do wrong? I was a good employee, good record, good attendance. So why me and not somebody else? Or apparently the Lord had other plans for it. And he said, Keith, why not you? I must admit, this was a very, very low point 
of my life, however, things were about to get even darker as it became a struggle, found the faith, and seeking employment again. I eventually did secure employment again as a service rep representative with another Fortune 500 company. Several months had elapsed, and lo and behold, I was let go from that company, also as a part of a downsizing of corporate America. Whew. Where do you go from here, Keith? You're out of work, so it must mean to the unemployment line. Go figure. Though this can't be happening to me. I'll get back to that in a little while. Fast forward, the RCA GE Reemployment uh, Service Company generously allowed me to use the facility once again, even though I no longer work there, uh, to seek other uh, employment opportunities, even though I had previously you know, been let go from the company. During one of my visits, one of the counselors approached me about pursuing a career in civil service. I had not thought about it prior to that point, but I figured, what did I have to lose? Part of labor's hiring at the time, and thus I obtained a number of interviews with employment, unemployment services, and Camden, Jeffrey, and Brown. Why did the three Brown offered me jobs in the claiming time? I didn't even know what claiming time was. I must say, I was excited about the new opportunity, but not pleased with the starting salary because it was lower than I had made in corporate America, but I had to humble myself and say, you gotta do what you gotta do. And the building was a total loss. <laughs> In hindsight, I must truly say that the people who worked there embraced me from the first day that I arrived, and for that I would love to be grateful. Mind you, some people from the Department of Labor and Housing. <laughs> I arrived, and like I said, for that I will be able to thank the most of them, of all, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I was not quite sure what the job was playing to down there until I, I was ready for another opportunity. As a claims examiner, your job is to interview and question the claimants as to the reason why that you're no longer employed. And then in turn, you contact your employer and ultimately you have to make a decision as to whether they are eligible for benefits. It seems fairly simple. An hour later, discovered this was not the easiest job to do on a day in, day out basis. Your decision making. However, I knew I had responsibilities of a family. I worked with the Burlington office for a couple of years, but ultimately transferred to the Candom office to obtain my permanent status in the position for civil service. I enjoyed my brief stay there, but was, I left after six months. Because the office manager and I did not see eye to eye. And I let it be known that this was an environment that was conducive to my career growth. I always thought that I could get along with just about anybody and work with just about anywhere, but not in this particular situation. As a result, I requested a transfer, which was ultimately granted to me. And I vowed to myself never to ever step foot in that camp office again. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of you already know part of the story, right? <laughs> Little did I know at the time that he had other plans for me that I could not be revealed to me at that time. I never returned back to the Burlington office as, as I expected. My coworkers welcomed, welcomed me with open arms. I told them I appreciated the welcome home, but this was only going to be a temporary stop. Because there were bigger, bigger and better things on the horizon for me. After a couple more months, I knew that they had to be more, however, not necessary at the local level. As a result, I had a sit-down meeting with my manager. He helped me change some directions on what I needed to do as far as further my career advancement was concerned. The manager went on to tell me that there was an opportunity, but that I would have to open, be open and willing to travel, whether it's to Trenton or statewide, and that I could apply for any postings on both of I heeded his advice and ultimately landed a job in the benefit of the payment control section as an investigator in the main office of Trent. Primary responsibilities were to collect refund funds for people. That wasn't always the easiest job either. And help set up payment plans with individuals who were paid benefits for one reason or another. I also responded back to letters from our records office. They would be saying, said, you will see how all this comes together. And how the Lord took hold of my career and my life and molded me into the man he wanted me to do to help glorify his kingdom. Where do you need me to go from here, Lord? The Lord said you did such a commendable job as claim examiner that he needed to take this thing to another level. Well, that level was to the appeal to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To hear and judge the two cases at Deuteronomy 1, 9 through 18. As I worked in this unit for more than 13 years, I can honestly say this was most the most challenging but rewarding position that I ever endured as it gave me the opportunity to hone many of my skills, including speaking, 
listening, writing for most of all my people and decision making. And with preparation for my future, future positions in leader, leadership, I realized then it was such a com com comfortable fit, almost like a brand new shoe. And then I recall business law was my favorite class down in Norfolk State, and I really didn't know why. I don't recall the instructor's name, but go figure. He looked just like that guy. So. <laughs> as much as I enjoyed my time with the appeals uh, unit, dealing with the case though, I knew there had to be more for me as, as my goal was to reach the highest account level within the Department of Labor, and that was the Board of Review. In doing so, my career with the Department would have been a total success. So I thought, the position as a penalty specialist was eventually posted. That was for the Board of Review. In my mind, I knew without a doubt that I would have one of those positions. As I had former uh, knowledge of the position, expertise, and I had the detail there being a co-worker for a period of nine months. Uh, month. So I was like, well, I know the job already. Right. Just get it. Well, I guess I got my rude awakening because the positions were offered to two other employees who happened to be co workers and friends of mine. I tried not to show my feelings on the other side, but believe, believe me, there was plenty, plenty of anger, bitterness, resentment, envy, jealousy on the inside, which was directed at my co workers unfairly. I knew my feelings toward my co workers were unwarranted and unfair and did not allow for God's wishes for my life. These two individuals had done nothing wrong to me. Nothing at all. In a nutshell, I made this all about me and not about what was best and not what the Lord wanted for me. After getting myself together, I knew I had to take action. And bear in mind, my coworkers had no knowledge of my feelings. So I immediately drew up two separate emails to both of my coworkers, congratulating them on their promotions and letting them know that both were deserving of such wishing them all the best on their new job and their new endeavors. Well, I thought it was a 100 pound weight lifted off my shoulders. And I knew that was the right thing to do. And that with patience, my time would come. Yeah. What do you want me to do next, Lord? As it felt like the time and opportunities were running out and the years were waning on. And the daily commute was getting to be somewhat cumbersome. I knew it was time to, to lean on my favorite scripture, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Once again, I was at a crossroad as to what direction I was going. Should I just keep going and just ride this thing out into retirement or trust God? Well, I'm here to say, Saint, God be the glory. I made the decision to trust God, even though I had no idea where I was going. Fast forward, another promotional opportunity came up for a manager's position in Camden, New Jersey. Remember I had said 20 years prior that I was never going back? <laughs> Long years old, I interviewed for the job with God and went back to I distinctly recall when I went in the, uh, the stock room and there were some fathers and boxes in there. Didn't I find my father in 20 years prior? <laughs> Lord, we never know. We never know what he has in store for us. But until I humbled myself and trusted him, none of this would have occurred. None of this would have happened. Along the whole, I interviewed from jobs and said, I got it. Doing a conversation with my son to be bought. We spoke very little about the particular little job other than there were some problems in the office that needed to be addressed. And that he felt that I was the right person for the job. I was taken aback for a few reasons. First and foremost, I already said to myself that I would never return again to the Canada office under any circumstances. Second, there was a gentleman before the job was even posted. He worked on the same floor as me, and he would say, Keith, did you apply for my job? I looked at him like, what kind of job are you talking so I said, well, maybe he saw something in me that I didn't know. Fast forward, I know that was what God said. Uh -huh. The Lord sent him in my place to let me know. Get ready. Uh -huh. So he, he had no connection or no knowledge of, of, of the job or anything like that. I can only say, like I said, that this was a message from God. It still boggles my mind thinking about it today. Needless to say, I finally realized the calling that the Lord had on my life and the spiritual gift that he had bestowed upon me to operate in his kingdom, in his kingdom in the role of leadership. Uh -huh. Now, not shy, Keith. Because believe me, growing up, I would have never thought to 
they would have asked me to be in any type of standing up here, a leadership role. But when he takes control of your life, he had that life already planned that for you. He got a problem with his leadership. That's what I did. Because as we know, that, that role of leadership, that's not easy. You got to be a decision maker. You got to be a good listener. You might not always be the most popular person in the room, but you got to make a decision. And one other thing, I think sometimes we get the misconception that the leaders know everything. We don't know a whole lot of things, but we know how to lead people in the right direction. That's all he asked me. Know a little bit about a whole lot of things, but not a whole lot about one thing. I don't want to say fake it till you make it, but sometimes you got to act like it.
13 years. 13 years. 13 glorious years. It was a little relationship at first with them. I'm settling there, but things kind of calmed down. And when I left, I finished as vice president. I was offered a job as president, but I declined only based on the fact that having a full-time job and doing that board of education, that was a lot of work. Yes. I was just honest, honest with them about it, but I remember a young lady that was president, she said, I know why you're here with me. You're here to keep me calm. I said, for no other reason, if that's what you need, that's what you get. And also being appointed trustee chair person and conference delegate in my church, the coaching job that I had. So where I'm going with uh, the saints is that just the way he molded my life and handed out responsibility got me ready for it because I wasn't ready a long time ago. But he put the right people in my life. He gave me the right training. I stayed connected to the Holy Spirit and truly gave my life to Christ. And that's when things started to make sense and things started to happen. It's never too late. Look at all the people. Well, you know, as I go back to say, what is your call? What is your call? And it has nothing to do with how old you are, what title you have, where you're at in your life right now, whether you're in your 30s, 40s. I'm 66 right now, so. When I retired from my paid job, he said, I got other work for you. And that's when the focus started to go. What do you want me to do, Lord? And the last conference that we had down at the he said, it's time for you to stand up. Stand up. I've already prepared you. No fear. He said, I've already prepared you. And I know I have all this around me to support me. I'm just a baby with right now. I just admire how Reverend Sharper gets up there and does his thing. And he's a lot younger than me. But it doesn't matter. We all feed off of one another. That's right. And Saints, I'm telling you, you have to understand what your calling is. You, there'll never be a comfort in your life and inside of you. That, and that's that inner peace and, and connection to the Holy Spirit that allows you to understand why you're here. You can't ask anybody else for it. You can maybe get their advice. But he, he put us all here for a purpose. Yes, he did. You may live 50 years and didn't know what your purpose That's all right. I didn't know for a long time. I just said, well, I'll be a nice person. <laughs> do what I'm told. No, I got more for you than that. But you just got to step out on faith. I see a couple of my teachers here right now. I've, I've been in class for one semester. Reverend Shepard, Reverend G. Wow. I just looked at them for guidance because they did this before I did. But I feel confident right now that they have, definitely have you on the right route. I don't know all where the Lord's going to take me, everything he wants me to do. But he said it doesn't matter. I just need you to help glorify that by my kingdom. Amen. Lead non believer towards Christ. <laughs> we feed off of one another. We learn from one another. I was thinking back to when we, when we go to school. It tells us you go to start from kindergarten and then you go to grade 12 and then you got into life. You may go and get your college degree, what happened. But I thought about it, I was like, well, what do you do when you're like 40, 45, 50? Who grades you, grade you in? Well, the Lord's always looking down. But you got to look deep within yourself and be able to critique yourself. Amen. If you're doing the same things at 50 and 60 that you did when you were 40, that's not, there's no growth. Yeah. But that starts from within in here. Yeah. That connection to the Holy Spirit. What's in your heart? You gotta humble yourself. Maybe not about me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Can I help somebody else? You don't have to know. My attitude was all along the way that I don't care what title you hold, how much money you have, what color you are. I think I've always had that rapport with people because I just take you as you are. That's all. I can talk to pretty much just about anybody. And after doing that job with the Department of Labor, I know I can because <laughs> some of the attorneys and things like that, they, they, they can be very difficult. But you hold your ground. Yeah. You hold your ground. And you have to be confident within yourself. I got a long way to go. I got to work on my prayer again. I got to work on staying focused. But he said, just take your time. Don't worry. Use your resources. Yeah. <clears throat> and 
and stay focused with me. Stay focused. Stay focused. We all have a job to do. Everybody is just here tonight. But when you leave here from today, if people come up to you and ask you, well, what was the message or messages about? Don't say, you can say Keith, but I'm just the best. He just used me. It came from him. So God said today, Jesus Christ said today, not Keith. Because too often we get focused on the person. And if we get mad at the person, or if we don't like the person, it's not about the person. He just uses them. But you have to humble yourself to let yourself be used. Right? You have to humble yourself. You humble yourself. I just want to, like I say, thank everybody for coming out here today. I had a little bit more dessert, but I don't want to be too long with you. There was another subject on my mind about happiness and joy. Are they interchangeable? Do we know what they mean? <coughs> Happiness is external. Uh -huh. Joy is internal. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Do we search for happiness or do we search for joy? Because understand, happiness is on the other side. Uh -huh. On the other side. Went through the, the Christmas season. We got our gifts. What's the novelty where though we don't even want to be bothered with it that morning after time? <laughs> right? We don't know where it came from. Or we're looking for that other person to make us happy. If you're not happy on the inside, it's not going to matter. That's right. Okay? How do we get that happy? I mean, it's no shame because most of the time we're not taught how to do these things. But there's a the teacher right up there. Yes, sir. Nobody else will help. Stand in this word. If you read it, read it again because it's going to mean a little bit different tomorrow, next day, than it did today. And being kind to one another because we never know we're going to need one another. That's, that's on our job, within our families, and our friends, the people that we met, and the people we have today. It goes a long way. Sometimes I'm tired. That's all right. When you rest, you'll be okay. But we're here to bless and help one another. We can't do this thing alone. Because at the end of the day, like I said, it doesn't matter what title you hold, hell, how much money you got in the bank, we're all God's children. Close your eyes for a minute. You don't see the person next to you. You don't see anything. Maybe darkness. What if it stayed like that? So the person next to you, like I said, you don't know what color they are, where they came from. All you know is that we all here come here humbly and we're God's children. So as we leave here today, you have to ask yourself, did you hear God's call? Did you answer his call? What is your purpose? We, we all have time find out your purpose in this lifetime. And as I say, don't worry about how long it's been. It's not where you're at, it's where you're going. <laughs> so if you, if, if you haven't answered to your call yet, what, you're still here. So you're still here for a reason, right? <laughs> My suggestion is that we answer to his call. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And I thank you and I love you for supporting me. Makes me feel good inside. Amen. Amen.
while the stewards and the pastor are conferring, Reverend Shepherd will open the doors of the church.
Good evening. As uh, myself, as a pastor in the stores, we were in there, and I basically told them about. I think Brother Keith is worthy to be exhorted, Amen. and I explained to them that I took them to being in sports. When you play football, you learn how to catch. You learn how to learn the plays. You learn how to the certain things that you need to get in the three-point stance. Mm -hmm. You don't just automatically know how to do those things. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same thing as Brother Keith going to the ministry. He still got to learn the ropes of being in the ministry. He still won't be nervous. He still have to build his library up to spend his knowledge. He still have to get with seasoned people. He might make mistakes, but that's okay. That's okay, because he has to crawl before he walk. Amen? So, Brother Keith, as long as he stays with the Holy Spirit, as long as he in tune with the Holy Spirit, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through him what needs to be said to the church to edify the body and to glorify God and to horrify the enemy, he's going he's to win every time. Amen, Amen about that? Amen. So, with Brother Keith, I know as long as he does what he needs to do, and I believe that he will do it. He's been doing it ever since I've been here. He's been nothing but a help to me. He's been encouragement to me. And I got him I got him as well. The Bible says iron sharp and iron. So where he falls, I'm gonna be there to help you pick him up. Amen. Same thing would happen to me. I fell, I had season people to pick me up, encourage me along the way. He might make mistakes here and there. He's not gonna have the Fire Holy Ghost filled sermon right away. But the Holy Spirit will lead him and guide him into what he needs to say. And it's gonna hit someone's ear, someone's heart, to where they're gonna be set, they're gonna be set free, healed, and delivered. Amen? Amen. As long as he stays with the Holy Spirit, he can't lose. Amen? Amen. Doesn't matter what the enemy does, he's always gonna be on the winning side. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to present the certificate to Brother Keith Exhorter. Keith Austin, a member of St. Paul UAME Church, residing on 305 West 3rd Street, Palmyra, New Jersey, is hereby authorized to conduct the local services for the prayer of exhortation and is exercising of his gifts from the Lord whenever given opportunity under the direction of the pastor of the charge where he, as the member of St. Paul UAME Church, on June 8, 2023, I present the sum and I introduce to others Exhorter Brother Keith Austin. Sir. 
churches that we have anymore. You know, the Eagles were supposed to play the day. Lord, so I'm not worried about the Eagles. <laughs> so I'm worried about what's going on in this house right here. So this is the only way things accomplished. So let's just make a concerted effort to support one another. Amen. I mean, because look what the support is here for me. Let's support one another. You don't have to know. We know one another. Or if not, you'll know one another sooner or later. But I just see one little person that came in, my granddaughter. Where she at? <laughs> Back there. <laughs> she just makes my heart melt. Respect where respect are due. If Reverend Young and Reverend Evans had any remarks, um, they can stand up. And I just thank you, praise God, for the word. I thank you, praise God, for touch your heart. And you said, I'm going to stand up for Jesus. And like Brother Keith said today, we don't have to examine ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I'm praying for you. Amen. And you pray for me because I need it. And I know you need it too because none of us is perfect. Amen. Praise We're all God. striving to see Jesus. Amen. So let's keep striving. Amen. Let's keep loving. Let's keep encouraging. Let's just keep uh, just loving on each other. Amen? amen. We don't know the day or the hour when the Son of Man comes. So right. let's right. just love one another. Amen. Right. God bless. <laughs> said and uh, I'm glad that we didn't make it here. Uh, Aunt Roz and I just came back from Trinity and from North Jersey Ooh. to the drive there, but uh, we made a push to get here, so we want to hear and encourage um, Brother Austin and, and like Reverend Young said, um, it, it, the journey is beginning now, so we're going to continue to support and just show him love and whenever, whenever you need any any help, anything, just call anybody, call your ministers, call us. And we need help and right like that. We're here to help, and that's what we do. It's a growing thing, and we're all here to support uh, one another. Amen. 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 Appreciate it. So all hearts and minds are clear. We can stand for the benediction.